Now, here comes the crux. Welcome back to this video, by the way. Uh, here comes the crux. What we were trying to do uh, was work out the expected value of this random variable big X, which is act, uh, which ascribes to every single one of these possible uh, intersections. Uh, it ascribes the number of people in each of those intersections. What we wanted to do is we wanted to say, okay, just look at one of these specific ways, so one of these green bands, where you're just considering a single way of ascribing 100 people into 15 committees. Just look at the intersections belonging to that, and take the expected value of this random variable big X. Okay, here's the crux. We've got these other 100 random variables which are also acting on this probability space and ascribing to each one of these uh, one of these uh, intersections. It's ascribing a 0 or a 1 depending on whether the person I, I person, I'm just talking about now the random variable XI to be general, uh, is in that intersection basically. Here's the brilliant idea. If we now just pull out this uh, strip, this green strip, i.e. we pull out one of these at random, basically, one of these arbitrary ways of ascribing 100 people into 15 committees. You just pull out one of these green strips like this from the uh, larger probability space and just to look at that. So we've got all of these intersections in here, one intersect two, one intersect three, etc. You've got all of these intersections. Basically, all of these random variables, this big X remains intact. It's still ascribing to each of these intersections uh, the number of uh, the number of possible ways. Uh, well, sorry, the number of people in that intersection. And these other random variables, x1, um, which ascribes you 0 or 1. And this is the important part, that these random variables, x2, etc., all, all the way up to x100, they remain intact, basically. Oh dear, what have I done? X100 in here, so there's dot 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 because there's lots in between, which again ascribes you 0 or 1. They remain intact. Now, the other thing is they remain, they contain, they remain, they have exactly the same distribution on this bit, on this little bit of the probability, of the original big probability space, as they did on the big probability space. So all of these random variables, x1, remains Bernoulli distributed with probability of 1. Uh, one, uh, 1 over 35. X2 remains Bernoulli distributed 1 over 35. Because in the original probability space, uh, the probability, if you went along, the probability of this one having uh, person 1 in was 1 over 35. If you went, sorry, if you go along in this original probability space, the probability of this one having uh, person 1 in was 1 over 35. The probability of this one having person 1 in was 1 over 35. The probability of this one having person 1 in was 1 over 35. Equivalently, the probability of this one being ascribed 1 by uh, random variable x subscript 1 was 1 over 35, etc. You can go along and along and along. Now, if I've just pulled that out, the probability of you uh, having person 1 in does not change just because I pulled you away from the rest of those, it's still 1 over 35, 1 over 35, 1 over 35. Similarly, for all the other people, all of these random variables remain can remain the same distribution as they had on the entire probability space. Now, that's not trivial. That comes uh, from the nature of the problem. Uh, it's not trivial that if you know, if you pull out a tiny bit and have these random variables now restricted onto that, that they're going to maintain their entire distribution, their, the same distribution. But the setup of the problem means that they do in this case. Okay, right. Now, we want the expected value of this random variable x on this uh, probability space here. Well, that's just going to be equal. We just replace x with what it is. It's the sum of all of these. So it's the expected value of x1 plus the expected value of x2. Oh, sorry, I've skipped a step. Sorry, let me write that out again. Right, so I've, I'd applied linearity before saying I'd applied linearity. So uh, let's write x as the sum of x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to plus x100, etc. And now we apply linearity. We say that, okay, even though these aren't independent, they are very, very much so not independent, they are, uh, linearity doesn't need them to be independent. So we can split this up into the expected value of x1 plus the expected value of x2 
plus all the way up to the expected value of x100. Now, what is the expected value of a Bernoulli random variable? Uh, these are all identically distributed, which means that if we want to work out the expected value of x1, it's the same as the expected value of x2. Uh, all of them are basically identical. So we're just going to end up with 100 times the expected value of x1. So let's just work out the expected value of x1. Okay. Right, so x1 ascribed to a 0 and a 1. The definition of expected value is that the expected value of, let's say, a random variable x1, and I've just dropped the brackets, that's something you'll see people do often, is every possible value that the random variable can take on, so I'll put little x here, times the probability of that, uh, that outcome. Okay? Right, so one of the outcomes is 0. So when I multiply 0 by the probability that you're 0, which is 34 over 35, it may be a huge probability, but you're still zero. So zero multiplied by 34 over 35 is still zero. So you've got zero multiplied by 34 over 35. Uh, that bit obviously doesn't contribute. Then we have plus one, the other outcome, times one over 35. So we get that the expected value of x1 is one over 35. Okay? Stick that in. We get that the expected value of x is 100 over 35 basically, which if we work that out, it's uh, we split if we split this into 70 plus 30, then we get that it's 2 and uh, 30 over 35, which is 6 over 7. So there we are, we've got a number greater than 2, which shows us that there had to be in this arbitrary green slip we picked out. I did not tell you which way I'd, I'd chosen to ascribe the 100 people into the 15 committees. I just said, pick an arbitrary one of these. This argument works perfectly well, whichever one you pick. Uh, I get that the expected value of this random variable just acting on this single way of ascribing 100 people into 15 committees uh, that that is going to be two. Uh, that the expected number uh, of people in each of these uh, in these um, intersections is going to be two uh, plus six sevenths, basically. Which means that one of these intersections must have contained at least three people in. Because if they'd all contained less than three people, they would all have to contain either zero, one, or two people. And if you mean up a bunch of zeros, ones, and twos, you cannot possibly get two and six sevenths. So there we are. There we have used uh, linearity and... Um, bit of concepts from conditional expectation to prove uh, something that looked that would be very difficult to prove without using those uh, without using linearity